Hey everybody, what's up? David Burns, good to be with you today. It is early September, so here in the U.S., we are actually getting close to getting into fall, so we're late summer right now. And I'll tell you what, the bees are really wanting to be fed. And it's important to feed your bees this late in the year because there's not a lot out there, and even if it is, it doesn't produce a lot of nectar for them. And they need to raise bees in winter physiology. And I've always promoted to feed your bees one-to-one -one sugar water in the fall, not two-to-one, that stores up resources. One-to-one -one actually helps the queen lay more, and it empowers the nurse bees to be able to feed the young larvae, and that's the bees of winter physiology that we're looking to raise this time of the year. And to do that, this is my secret weapon. A lot of you think that I keep this confidential, that I don't tell anybody what it is. That's not true at all. We sell these additives. Uh, we sell, it's a very hot item. It's an item that we have trouble keeping in stock. People put it in their wish list. Everybody buys it as soon as it goes online. They put it in their wish list. So as soon as it comes back online after it runs out, it's automatically gone instantly, it seems like. But uh, anyway, I want to show you what we do. We use three components, and that is we use Honey Bee Healthy. I've used this for years. And then we use uh, a bee pollen, like a protein substitute. And right now, for the last few years, I've used Ultra Bee uh, pollen powder. And then I use Amino Bee Booster. I ran out of my little jars. Even I ran out of little jars. I don't use little jars. I, I buy it this big. <laughs> this will last you a lifetime. So I don't, I don't think you should unless you've got hundreds of hives. But uh, this goes a long way. <laughs> it's, it's highly concentrated. So you don't need that much. I only use a teaspoon per quart jar. Now this is two quarts right here of extremely hot water. And then I use a teaspoon of the protein powder a teaspoon of Honey Bee Healthy, and a teaspoon of Amino Bee Booster, which is uh, protein. And so I'm guessing right now, I'm kind of like the, the chef in the kitchen who's a pinch of that and a pinch of this. So here goes a teaspoon. Yeah, it doesn't take much, right? Just a little bit. And then we're gonna shake this really good to Honey Bee Healthy. And we're gonna put in a teaspoon by guessing. You can use an actual teaspoon to measure it, but you can get pretty good at just reading it. A teaspoon is actually a little bit smaller than your traditional teaspoon in your kitchen, uh, you know, that you use for your coffee cup or something. All right, and then a teaspoon of this, which is gonna be Amino B Booster. I don't want it all to come out at once. I'm gonna be watching that a little bit. Yeah, if you go over, it doesn't really hurt anything that much, but I just don't wanna waste it. There you go, that's our teaspoon. And then I'm a little bit low on sugar right now, so I'm gonna use the last drop I have. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you would add enough sugar. Uh, so I fill the water halfway up, and then I fill the rest of it all the way up with sugar. Now, some people freak out because they're like, is that volume? Is that, what, how do I measure that? Is it dry or wet volume? And then oh, I gotta be exact. Don't, don't try to be exact like that. Don't worry about it. One to one means one part water, one part sugar, however you want to make that come out. So we'll just pour all of this in there and uh, it won't bring it all the way to the top, but it, it'll get the bees what they need. Uh, and it'll make a video for us. I don't want to go to the store and buy another bag right yet. All right, so now some of you say that you can't get your pollen powder mixed up. And the trick to that is to use very hot water. So as you can see here, you just gotta stir it with very hot water. And sometimes what people and I have experienced is the pollen powder where actually, uh, when the jar gets entirely empty, you can see pollen powder that the residue is here on the bottom underside of the jar lid. And like, oh, the bees didn't get it all. Well, they do because you can see how this already has this orange color to it. So that's just the, that's the orange color of this powder that is in there, see? So it's just, you just gotta stir it really well. If you really are in, really wanting to make it so perfect, you can actually put this mixture right here in a food blender and blend it, you know, for half a minute or a minute. And that's really gonna make the, the, the powder actually become part of the water more mixed in a lot better. But you can see that's really mixing in good here. So this is what I'm gonna be feeding my bees. I've got 30 days to feed my bees, the way I look at it. Maybe a little bit longer, but I'm already on, this is September the 10th. 
And so October the 10th, we're already going to have, by that time, a hard freeze. Everything's going to be killed off. I might be able to still feed my bees for a few more weeks, even a month after that. But normally not. Normally, any time the temperature gets 50 degrees Fahrenheit or below, the bees won't take the feeding fluid, the sugar water, from on top of their hive. They're clustered. And so that's when I transfer over to my winter bee kind. Now, pay, pay close attention. I, I know that you have a lot of questions. The transition from the liquid feed in the fall to my winter bee kind, I don't mind letting there be a gap of time. Like I may stop feeding them in November. I may not put my winter bee kinds on until the end of December or the first week in January. So if I can feed them good and get them going good, I can go two or three, even a month before I put the winter bee kind on. So it's, it's not that crucial that the winter bee kinds have to follow immediately after feeding them the liquid food. If you want to, it's fine if, you, if it works out, but sometimes I, I just want to feed them enough to get a lot of brood. So what we're trying to do is actually feed the bees this solution to stimulate them to raise brood. And we, we check that. We actually do inspections in October to make sure we have four to six frames Good. of capped over brood from this, by feeding them this solution. So let's go ahead and open her up and I'll show you how I feed my bees. And what I wanna do is I want a lot of bees of winter physiology. That means all the bees that they're gonna lay now will be bees of winter physiology. So I'm gonna use my feeder board I know many of you get frustrated that these are in stock and out of stock, but I think we're doing pretty keeping up with the stock level on these. But I put them like this. This is one I've used for years. Thank you so much for subscribing. It means the world to me. Thank you. Just hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't done that yet. And give me a thumbs up on this video. Now let's get back into showing you how I feed hives. And this is two places for your jars. Now in my case today, I'm just gonna give them one jar. That's one jar that we made. And if you notice, when you hold it upside down, it'll leak out for a minute, but then it will stop because of the vacuum of the jar itself. So after a, a little bit of time here, uh, the vacuum will take hold and hardly no water will drip out at all. And that's what you want. And this is what you want to put on the hive. The bees are going to go up and actually use their proboscis uh, to get that out of there. You can see some of the maybe the protein powder right up at the top ridge or over here and uh, may not have mixed in. You'll see some of that settling on your uh, lid that we talked about. No big deal, don't worry about that. Now, obviously we can't leave the hive like this. <laughs> uh, it's too open to the rain and everything. And so since I'm using this half gallon jar, and a lot of you tell me that you have found half gallon jars, okay? But did you find a half gallon jar with a small lid on it? This is uh, what well, two and seven eighth lid, I think. Two, two inches, seven eighth inch lid. It's a very small mouth jar. That's the one that fits my feeders. And I like that, it fits on there good. So I'm gonna put this box here. Got a few cobwebs in there. All right, so I'm gonna put that around my feeder board like that. It can be any old box. It can be a, it can even be a medium super if you're using like a smaller jar. And then I'm gonna put my top cover on, keep the rain out. And then I don't have a brick handy. I'll take one off this hive, because they can seal that off. This one can't, no bees are up there, but there you go. I'm gonna have pressure, and that's gonna allow uh, this hive to feed off of that jar. The neat thing about feeding them like this, you don't wanna feed them an entrance feeder in the front, because if you do, that's actually the back, the front's facing the other way. But if you feed them in the entrance this time of the year, it can induce robbing. Feeding from the top like this, even with the additives, other robber bees don't smell that. They can't, it's all in, contained in the jar. Bees are consuming it. And then it's so easy when you get ready to change it out. Look at this. All you have to do is take this off. And because we have screen, you can change your jars. Bees don't come out. So it's just a handy way to feed your bees in the fall and uh, get the bees built up of winter physiology. Now, if you wanna see a video, like if you're looking at my grass saying, oh boy, he needs to mow his grass, yeah. I made a video on how to trim your bee yard, how to mow, weed eat. I got a video that you'll like to see how I do it right over here. I'll see you guys over there.